The walls of the tabernacle were made of wooden boards that were covered in gold. Each board had four rings on one side and a single hole that pierced its side in the middle. By now we should recognize the wooden board is actually a pillar, which means it's the symbol of a promise. We saw from the outer court that a wooden pillar represents God's promise to send his son Jesus Christ as our redeemer. Each board of the tabernacle was covered in gold and rested on top of a silver platform that had two holes for the board's two tenons. The book of Revelation explains why each board of the tabernacle was covered in gold and placed on a silver platform. Each one of the golden boards that made up the tabernacle's walls was a representation of Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation. Jesus is the wooden pillar. He is the tree of life and the pillar of the church. He is wrapped in gold, which is the symbol of his love and devotion. And he stands on a silver cloud, which is the sign of his coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. The point of all this is, the ministry of Christ on earth as a Levitical priest in the earthly tabernacle is only the first half of a greater ministry that takes place in God's heavenly temple. Furthermore, the golden board of the temple wall also tells us Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God that was sacrificed for our sake. As it is written, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear. Altogether, the wooden board, the gold covering, and the silver base socket all represent the Lord Jesus Christ as he is portrayed in the book of Revelation. The walls tell us that the earthly sanctuary was built after the pattern of the heavenly. As it is written, Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. According to all that I show you, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its instruments, even so you shall make it. The Lord told Moses to put four coverings over the tabernacle. And you have to wonder, were the four coverings really necessary? The Hebrew word for covering is ohel, which means a tent or a place of communion, while the term tabernacle means God with us. So four different coverings would have to mean four different dwelling places. In the one covering of four parts, God is saying something very significant about the revelation of Jesus Christ. The four layers of covering explain four different levels of communion in the plan of salvation. They explain a kind of descending order from heaven to earth in their layered order from first to last. Beginning with the first of the four layers, the cherub covering of white linen represents God's first priority, which is the redemption of heaven and all the intelligences there. The other three coverings represent God's highest priorities in the earth. So the four coverings above the walls represent God's communion with heaven and earth and he says they are his first concern. Concerning the first covering, Revelation 12 tells us that the war between Christ and Satan began in heaven. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. After Satan was cast out of heaven, the Bible makes it clear that what began there was continued in the earth. The Bible says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Where are you coming from? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. The first chapter of Job tells us Satan claims that the earth is his, which is true in a legal sense. When Adam sinned, he unwittingly gave the dominion of this world to Lucifer. Adam's dominion over the earth is defined in Genesis 1.26, which says, 
Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. In the beginning, Adam's dominion consisted of everything in the air, the earth, and the sea. It's no coincidence, then, that the entire scenario of the end time is explained in terms of these same three dominions. Revelation 14, 6 and 7 says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Satan insists that the earth is his. Furthermore, in order to hold on to what he claims is his, Satan points an accusing finger at both heaven and earth. So, heaven is just as interested in the conflict as we are. The cherub covering therefore represents God's communion with heaven. It represents the burden of sin and sacrifice that Jesus would endure for heaven's sake. The linen covering of angels is a most eloquent symbol of what Christ's life on earth would mean to all those that dwell in heaven. The scripture says, For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. The innermost veil represents Christ's sacrifice and the burden of sin that he would willingly endure for heaven's sake. Concerning the second covering, the prophecy of Daniel is very helpful in explaining the meaning of the goat hair covering. In the sanctuary service, the goat was used as both a peace offering and as a sin offering. A goat was also offered on the Day of Atonement. Concerning this goat, Daniel says, a goat came rushing out of the west, moving so fast that his feet didn't touch the ground. He had one prominent horn between his eyes. In John 14 and verse 30, Jesus identifies Satan as the prince of this world. And in Ephesians 2 and verse 2, Paul refers to Satan as the prince of the power of the air. Finally, concerning this same goat, Jesus said, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. The Bible says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Clearly, the goat represents the ruler of the dominion of heaven and those people who once lived under Satan's authority. So the question becomes, what and where is this heaven? Our first clue is the goat head covering, which was made of 11 panels that were divided. Furthermore, the three dominions of the earth tell us how the light of heaven falls on those that are in the earth. Since heaven is the highest place in the earth, heaven gets the first light. It also gets the most light. So in symbolic terms, heaven must be the church. The fact that the curtain consisted of 11 panels that were divided bears this out. After Christ was crucified, there were 11 disciples that received the Holy Spirit in the upper room. Those eleven were reconciled to God on the day of Pentecost, which is fifty days after the Passover. In speaking to the leaders of Israel, Jesus said, You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and did not abide in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of lies. The goat hair covering tells us Satan was in charge of God's church. He had taken control of his leaders, just as he'd done in heaven when he turned so many of God's angels 
against their heavenly father. Both the cherub curtain and the goat haired covering had 50 clasps that joined them together. In this case, brass represents persecution, which is exactly what the disciples experienced after they came together on one accord and began to proclaim the good news. The cherub covering with his 50 clasps of gold represented the same bond of healing that took place in heaven. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost was proof that Christ's sacrifice on the cross was altogether acceptable to his father. The blue edge loops of the cherub covering represented Lucifer's rebellion that had divided the heavenly host. In this case, heaven was healed by the love of God, represented as the same 50 golden clasps that had also represented Pentecost. Revelation also explains the meaning of the ram skins dyed red. The Bible says, And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down to you, having great wrath. The second time Lucifer falls, he becomes angry at those that are in the earth and the sea, which represents those people who know little about the church or nothing at all. The three dominions explain the three levels of understanding that the people in the earth have concerning the light of truth. Those in heaven are closest to God, while those in the sea have the least amount of understanding about God and His plan for them. Revelation therefore explains that the fall of the he-goat in Daniel is the same fall of Satan in Revelation 12. The two are in fact one and the same. The ram has been historically identified as the kingdom of Greece. But clearly, if the ram represents the sacrifice of Abraham, which is Christ, then the prophecy of Daniel 8 identifies the ram as the great gospel commission of Matthew 24, 14, going forth into all the world. The ram explains both Satan's anger and his fall to the earth. The ram identifies they, the saints, who are attacked because they, God's last day church, overcome their enemy by the blood of the Lamb. Both Daniel and Revelation explain that Christ's dominion in the earth is represented as a covering of ram skins dyed red. Finally, we come to the last layer, the covering of badger skins. The term badger skin is more correctly translated in the revised version as seal skins that were taken from a dugong. This explains why the last covering involves the third dominion and why it is represented as a seal skin. The dugong was an unclean creature that was taken from the sea. Revelation explains that the final phase of the conflict is played out in the sea, which is the darkest of the three dominions. Satan comes down to those that know the least in order to take unfair advantage of them. But God has the last say in it all, because the greatest harvest of all takes place in the sea. Even though the creatures in the sea experienced the same wrath of Satan that we saw earlier when Satan fell to the earth, what's interesting is that the greatest harvest of all takes place in the sea, after the harvest is finished in the earth. The four coverings and the tabernacle tell us several things. First. They give us the frame of reference that we are to draw everything from, that frame of reference being the struggle for the dominion of the earth or the church. It tells us that the struggle for the dominion is in fact God's highest priority. And it tells us that the struggle is limited to a certain time period, which lasts from Pentecost to Pentecost. The four coverings and the tabernacle walls represent Christ's ministry as it takes place in heaven. The fact that the day of Pentecost is so prominently portrayed in the four coverings says Christ's ministry in the heavenly sanctuary reveals his ongoing commitment to his church by virtue of the power of his Holy Spirit. Since the golden walls of the tabernacle represent the Christ of Revelation, this tells us the book of Revelation is primarily concerned 
with the issue of the transition of the Earth's kingdoms and the struggle for its three dominions. The four coverings represent the transition of the kingdoms of this world from Lucifer to Christ. Remember, a kingdom can only survive if its subjects acknowledge their ruler's authority as valid. The good news here is, the people who are sold into slavery by means of deception now acknowledge their true king and pledge their allegiance to him and his authority. Hence, the fall. The four coverings portray Christ's ministry as the communion that he will have with those that want to be set free from the bondage of sin. Those who say the atonement was completed at the cross fail to understand the work of sanctification and redemption was just beginning at Pentecost, and it will continue until the day that probation closes. Both the four coverings and the book of Revelation tell us the hour of God's judgment is a time of persecution and wrath. During that time, God's promises will then prove to be especially important to his people.